All right, what's up, YouTube? Rahul back. Now, I'm going to do this quick video dealing with spells, sorcery, um, and a little bit of the conscious, subconscious mind. So, first we got to understand this, okay? When you're dealing with attention, anytime you pay someone attention, and the reason why they call it pay attention is because it costs you something. But it doesn't cost you money. It costs you energy, okay? When you give your energy away, to another individual, it empowers them, okay? It empowers them, and they become a generating force. The more people that give attention to a person or pay attention to an individual, it generates more power for them. This is why um, celebrities are powerful. This is why musicians and artists and actors are all powerful because they have the minds of millions of people paying them attention. Now, on the reverse side of that, if no one is paying you any attention, you feel low on energy, low on life, almost in a state of misery and loneliness, okay, because no one's paying you attention. We actually need people to pay us attention because we are recipients to each other, okay? We are actually electrical forces that recharge each other every single day, all right? And if you have no one to talk to or no one to recharge with, right, then Again, things begin to take toll on your mind and then eventually onto the body in a state of loneliness. Now, again, when you're dealing with um, this attention, what the artists are able to do or the musicians are able to do, they're actually able to give you what it is that you want to hear. And you find yourself waiting around for them to say something or do something that will become trendy in your life. So whether it's their dress code, their lingo, whatever, you begin to pick it up. And you're waiting for this person. So you become a, let's call it a, a minion to this person. This person, you give this person power over you. Just simply by paying them attention. Now, if you want someone to fade off and not exist, you just don't speak their, their names. Because when you speak their names, you bring life to them. That's the tone. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. You're speaking about them. So it brings relevance to them. It brings life to them. Now I'm going to use this example here. Like when you're dealing with a, um, when two guys are interested in one female, okay, one or the other might end up slandering or saying something about the other to keep the girl's attention on themselves. But what they ultimately end up doing is putting more attention on the other person or the other guy um, inadvertently. Just by trying to talk bad about them, they're actually directing that energy towards them. So what does the girl usually do in that situation? She starts to begin to think that this man is hiding something about the other guy. He doesn't want him to know because he's jealous or he's envious of this other guy. So the woman begins to take steps of wondering why you are talking bad about someone else. So you kind of push them right into the hands of the very person that you don't like. OK, so when you're dealing with a spell, again, you're dealing with you being trapped inside of a paradigm outside of your own. So anytime you're mentioning someone else, talking about someone else, you're bringing life to them. And that attention that you give to them empowers them rather than empowers yourself. So we create gods outside of ourselves. This goes all into idol worship. Um outside beauty, all these type of material things consciously that we want that will define us as quote-unquote gods. When the reality is we have a program that's installed in, us, installed in us. You've already been chipped. See, and again, you're waiting for some government to actually um, surgically place a chip in your head when the fact of the matter is the chip in your head is your subconscious mind. And when that chip gets programmed, your daily actions are carried out as an adversary to your own self. So anything can become a spell. You could be trapped in an alcohol paradigm and a cigarette smoking paradigm. You could be trapped in um, some people find uh, sex to be rejuvenating. And these type of things ultimately can lead you into a matrix that someone else's philosophy created for you. Because we all have different universes as we exist. This is a multi-universe plane. 
And what I mean by that is this earth. We all exist on different planes or different levels of existence as human beings. Some people that you're looking at are actually existing on a higher plane. You don't know what to say to certain people or how to start a conversation with certain people for these reasons because y'all energy are just not uh, synchronizing at that moment. You might have to go up or they might have to come up. Okay, so this happens a lot. And um, things like brushing your teeth that was good for your teeth. Now we have what you call fluoride or even the water is bad. So when we go to brush our teeth with this water, we're still under this program or this higher supremacy that has this cloud over us. All right. To where everything we do, everything around us is causing us to be adversaries to our own self, whether it's pollution, um, radiation, chemicals, poisonings, foods, stuff like this, okay? And it's vital that they impress these images on you because all these images and um, advertising, quick flashes, these all press the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind. The conscious mind will be aware of it. When you see something on TV, you become conscious of it and you want it, all right? But first, it gets processed. Now, um, the subconscious mind is not sub to the conscious mind. The subconscious mind is sub to the superconscious mind. The superconscious mind is omnipresent, okay? Unconscious, universal, all right? And this actually sends messages down to the subconscious mind where the subconscious actually sends messages down to the conscious mind, all right? Look at it as a pyramid. And the reason why that light or that eye at the top of the Illuminati pyramid is separated is because you're dealing with people who detach you from your unconscious or yeah, your unconscious or superconscious mind. And they reprogrammed your subconscious mind, which 95% of your daily actions gets carried out on your subconscious. So when we talk about a program, that could be television, that could be music, that could be advertisement, um, gossip. We could find ourselves trapped into a lot of different programs. One day you could be angry because of a spoke a person you spoke to. Next minute you could be um, humble because of a person you spoke to. And this is because uh, people's energy are recipient to yours. We are all quantumly connected. All right, passing energy, fusing energy through each other. So there are many umbrellas. All right. Well, there's one umbrella that this world is governed by. Let's call that a quantum web. But in that quantum web, there are many other programs and many other matrices. All right? Many other matrices. For instance, your body has many systems. The digestive system, the respiratory system, etc. All these systems, though, are working together in synchronicity for you to be able to do what you do uh, as existing. All right. So we have many systems working together in order to create. And that's what's taking place inside the body and outside the body. But the, the what happens is they get in touch with our subconscious. They tap into that and they place this chip in our brains. And um, you begin to get indoctrinated and you begin to oppose your beliefs or your so-called truths on other people. Whereas though. Everyone has their own right to believe whatever it is that they want to believe. And that's the catch. That's the catch. Because anytime I'm coming to you like, um, hey, do you know Michael Jackson, for example? And you say, no, I'm sorry, I don't know Michael Jackson. I'm like, how you don't know Michael Jackson? Everyone knows Michael Jackson. He's like, well, I'm sorry, I don't know uh, Michael Jackson. At that moment, Michael Jackson does not exist in your world. But if I begin to show you images, play you sounds, and do these type of things, then Michael Jackson will become a reality in your universe, in your world. And that will become new. That will become new. All right? So I just created this reality in your world, in your universe. And you have to accept it first in order to become your reality. And that's usually what happens. Because now you walk away from the conversation and you know who this person I was initially talking about is. All right? And that happens a lot with religion. They 
show you images and the writing systems and all these type of things come into place when you're talking about the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind processing um, based off of philosophy and theory could because they were detached from the unconscious mind. So when writing came into play, this is a time when unconscious and super consciousness was cut out. So we had to write and we had to uh, paint. We had to use art to express ourselves. All right. Before that, we were able to use this telepathy. Telepathy would be when two people say things at the same exact time, at the same moment. At that point in their brain, the electrical charge is taking place at the same exact time for it to be uttered at the same exact time. Or a person says what you was about to say. All this is evidence of you vibrating on the same frequency or close to vibrating on the same frequency. But when you pay people attention again and you give away your powers and you give it up, no matter if it's good or bad, you giving life to that person over yourself. This is why they say there's no such thing as bad uh, publicity. That's why they say that. Because at the end of the day, even if you're talking about a person bad, in the example I just made, a person is going to want to discover it for themselves. So they're going to go and find out what it is that you are hiding or keeping away from an individual from finding out on their own. And then when they do that, um, you usually look like the fool. Okay? So um, there's many spells, matrices, and you can escape these matrices. You can escape these type of things by simply being in your state of self, in a state of um, daydreaming, you know, night dreaming. Okay? Because meditation, again, meditation is not folding your legs and crossing your arms. Now, it's good to have your spinal cord straight for the information to be processed through your, uh, sent up your kundalini. But you can also lay on your back, okay? You can send more pressure to your forehead. That also um, generates energy to pull towards your pituitary gland, so forth and so on. There are other things you could do. But let me just stay on this subject. Because a lot of us get caught up in programs and we don't realize that we were raised in a cult the whole time. Since babies, we were born into a matrix. We speak a cult language as we speak in, as I'm speaking right now. You see what I mean? And this, this whole programming thing, people knew things about the subconscious mind that we thought they didn't know. So we all still uh, enter these physical wars and physical realities, but we must understand the power of frequencies, sounds, and images, because this shapes the reality. Images shape the reality. And you realize people are controlling you these ways. So what do you do to get out of that? First, you have to stay in yourself. You have to know what voice inside of you is who. Who is who? Because there's also outside entities that are trying to get you to project their image. This is what Satanists do. Luciferians do. They try to get you to create a reality for them because they do not have no connection with this super consciousness or this omnipresent universe. Okay, so you got to be mindful of that. Um, when they get you to watch certain televisions, what they do is they tell you a television show or a song is number one before the song even comes out. And what that does is that projects number one on your mind and they keep on saying it, number one, number one, number one. So much so that you believe it. So by the time the album drops, you rush to the store to get it like a million other people, automatically sending that album to number one. So there's a science of saying you're the best. There's a science of saying you're number one. It also it, it manipulates, manipulates yourself, empowers yourself to do more, rather than empowering someone else and saying they're the best. This is when con science comes in. You have to con your own self. Right? You have to con your own self to manipulate the subconscious and reprogram the subconscious so that your daily actions could change. Okay? Because the subconscious is the medium. 
the medium of the unconscious or superconscious mind and the conscious mind. It is going to create a reality for the conscious mind. Ultimately, that is the goal. But a lot of us create our, uh, our conscious minds based on our physical evidence. What we could see, what we could touch, our wants, our desires. Again, that all plays process, that all plays a role on the conscious mind. And when you look back at history, you understand where there was a time we were writing and there was a time we weren't. And that time that we weren't, it's because we didn't need to. And the time uh, we was in tune with self. So the realigning of ourselves would be the mind, the body, and the soul. Okay, because you can't be um, physically sick without being mentally sick. And you can't be mentally sick without being spiritually sick. So we have our bodies in one place, our minds in another place, and our soul always existing. And these things are constantly at war with each other. So the realigning would be mind, body, and soul, the kundalini. And we'll be, shoot, we'll be able to shoot energy and receive, transmit energy directly from the universe. It wouldn't have to go through anything else to enter you. Secondary. It'll enter you as a primary. So when you're dealing with science and adjectives and attempting to explain the science again, that is secondary. That is adjective. But what science are they attempting to explain? That science is you. That science is me. Okay? So stepping outside of any paradigm, eventually we're going to have to put the phones down, the technology down, and everything down and begin to practice uh, memory again. Because the memory and your brain is the biggest part of your brain. We're supposed to remember, but they don't want you to remember your past lives because you'll recreate them on this plane. They want you to remember your conscious life, what happened yesterday. When I say past life, I meant before your existence in the physical flesh. But they want you to subject yourself to what happened yesterday, what's going to happen tomorrow. Because that way, you forget about the now. And if what worked yesterday worked for you today, then you're going to repeat that same thing because you know it works. So the subconscious mind programs itself and it never gets a chance to reprogram itself because you're afraid of stepping out of what works, assuming nothing else works. So you subject yourself again to a matrix or someone else's ideas. Being fearful of being whoever it is that you want to be, you're subjecting yourself to a matrix. That could be a matrix that society creates. You only want to wear stuff that's trendy. You only want to talk about certain subjects, you know, um, all these type of things you do because you want to fit in. You don't want to be you. And that's another spell. So all spells aren't good and all spells aren't bad. All right. Sometimes you do have to be reprogrammed because you've been living in a state of um, just just having a calcified mind, subjecting yourself to the physical material world. You have no outside existence of people who will talk about spirituality and don't spend no time absorbing nature or nature's information, nature's outformation, actually, to put us in formation. Or realign ourselves. Okay, so there's a lot of things on that subject I'm gonna talk to, I'm gonna talk about, but I just wanted to make certain things clear on that level. Again, paying attention is key. You know, this is why in school they want you to pay attention because that means everything. Your focus. Your focus means everything. Your focus is going to shape your reality and your perception, and whatever you perceive to be real, it becomes real. Because that is the power of thought. Alright, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to get too deep into it. But I got more videos coming. Um, stay out the matrix. Don't create a matrix neither. Don't, don't, begin, don't keep on creating a matrix for yourself. Because there are many. It's not just one matrix. Alright, it's not about going to the movies to see the matrix and say, oh, I get it. No, that's part of the plan too. That's to get you to go to see something. Right? 
they give you a little bit of truth to order to make a lie sound convincing. You have to add some truth. So they'll give you some truth. But what happened is your subconscious was filled up with more lies than anything. And what drug what uh, dragged you there to that movie theater or to that to see that movie was a little bit of truth. It showed you a flash on you to manipulate you. And then it grabbed you and pulled you into its matrix. And now you have a little bit of truth, but you have so much imagination and other people's art into your mind now, now you start to correlate that little bit of truth with what the movie was trying to say. And that's someone else's philosophy behind the curtain. So they give you a piece of your legend with philosophy and you end up carrying out that movie or their ideas, whatever the case may be, or your whole overstanding or understanding could be disrupted. So you do have to watch what you read, watch what you write, uh, watch what you say. All these things have an effect. Some, a wise man once told, once told me, if you um, want to live forever, you write, you draw. And that is a spell because when you do that, you keep the lesser minds repeating your own actions. So what happens is you keep revolving around the same access over and over and over again. And history ends up repeating itself because we're stuck at studying the future by studying the past. Or trying to determine what's going to happen in the future by studying the past. Existing in the now. So there's a lot of confusion going on. And this is the matrix. It flipped the brain upside down. Alright? So we have to reprogram our mediums again. Which is our subconscious minds. And we have to con ourselves in order to do it. We have to say, I'm not this person. I'm not these thoughts. I don't do this. I don't do that. You have to talk to yourself and do that to yourself in order for your program day to day to begin to change. Because you already been chipped. You've been chipped since a, since a child the minute you started to go into school. Your belief system, everything was shaped. They begin to shape your reality using images, using writings, and using spellings or spells. This is how it works. Okay? You have those... Um, who can actually control nature and weather by saying certain tones and chants and stuff like this. And then you have those who control nature and weather using machines. So nature and science are always adversary to one another because nature is the natural organic science. All right. And spells are always casted upon us every single day. Movies, television, um, even people we decide to communicate with. We end up doing what it is that they want us to do or we end up doing things that they do or things we don't normally do. It's because we download other people's programs into our systems. We start to view things the way they view things. Okay? So, um, that's just that. Um, your mother chipped you at an early age. Like I said, all spells are not bad. She chipped you at an early age and told you not to go into the street, not to do this, not to stay away from this person, um, don't do that. And what she did was she's in, she installed her program inside of you. She chipped you at an early age. So when you're out there in the world and that experience is right there in your face, you hear that voice again come up in your head. You hear your mother's voice come up in your head. And she's saying, don't do that. Then I tell you that don't that we don't do that. So that spell is in your subconscious. It's, it's in your memory because your memory, as I said, is the biggest part of your brain. It's constantly picking up information throughout the day. So I advise people to go and talk to trees. And when I say talk to trees, uh, yeah, I just I mean that. There are tones coming out your voice. Whenever you touch a tree, you become a recipient to that tree. That tree sends information through you, okay, and you send information back to that tree. And what happens usually is you want to sit down by that tree. You become comfortable near a tree because that tree is humility. That tree is life. All right? So it automatically humbles you. When you eat an apple, that information enters your brain and it makes you feel a certain way and think a certain way. Eat a piece of steak and eat an apple and see what it does to the body and how the body acts. And you'll see 
even on the a thought process, how an apple has different information than a piece of steak or a piece of dead meat or whatever the case may be. You see what I'm saying? So again, everything is a live deity. Everything is quantum. Okay? Everything we say and do is affecting the ecosystem on the planet. And this is why our planet is at a low vibration right now and it's cause for replenishing because the people probably won't get it in time. They will not be able to realign themselves and give off that mass that sends out this energy to the universe to let them know we're okay. But when we send out this negative energy and we begin to use ego, we attract and we pull things into the universe. We pull things into the earth. We pull storms into the earth. So mentally, we control these celestial bodies, but um, we've forgotten how. We've forgotten how. And we've been all out of tact, and now we will see results of a higher being having to take control of this. Okay, but that's that. Watch out for the spells, because there are many of them. Okay, don't become an adversary to yourself. That is the biggest spell. Conquer yourself. Conquer that inner you that is the bad side. That is the jihad, the spiritual war. It's not a physical war. It's a, it's a spiritual war. All right? So I'm going to leave it at that. What I do to the fam? Peace out, YouTube.